What does burnout mean to you? Are you feeling fatigued? Are you feeling unmotivated? This is where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp will match you to the perfect online therapist for whatever issues it is that you are dealing with. With BetterHelp, you can do an audio call, a video chat, or you can even just text with them if you don't want to see or talk to your therapist in person. It is all on your own time and your own terms. Our listeners get 10% off of their first month when they go to betterhelp.com slash hollyrandall. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash hollyrandall. Take care of your mental health for you and for the ones that you love. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Holly Randall Unfiltered. My guest today is Kazumi. Not only is she an incredible independent porn star who you can only find on OnlyFans, she is also a savvy businesswoman, and we're very excited to have her here today. So hi, Kazumi. Thank you for coming. (laughs) I'm so glad to finally meet you. I know. Yeah. You're like your Jesus. Like you're a patron saint of like <laughs> sex worker sluts. We're like, thank you, Holly Randall, for everything you do. <laughs> wow. I didn't, uh, I did not, um, I have to say I've, as much as um, I am sometimes a bit of a narcissist, I have never compared myself to like the Messiah, but I mean. No, you're pretty close. Go on. <laughs> yeah. You know, I would have you like by the bedside. <laughs> Oh my god, I love that. No one's <laughs> ever said that to me before. I, this this podcast is starting off wonderfully. <laughs> um, so how are you doing today? I'm doing super good. I'm a little congested, so I might have like a cough sometimes, but I'm having a great day. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's that's all right. You're allowed to have a cough. Um, I guess we're not scared of coughs anymore. No, I'm like double vax, baby. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> same. But it's it's funny because like back in the early days of COVID, if anybody have a cough for any reason, everyone would be like, <gasps> Yeah. I used to give out free nudes to vax people it was like my movement to like help make the world a better place one move at a time look at you well i guess i still do if you send me your vax but i was like please get vaxxed here's a boob (laughs) you know two boobs of your double vaxxed (laughs) see we're both here like doing so much good for the world yeah i mean look at us we're just like saints yeah the world is a better place (laughs) because of us yeah for me specifically yeah (laughs) So, um, how, uh, so you're on OnlyFans only. We were talking a little bit before. I have a fansly, but it, it's not like my focus. Right. Okay. So let's say personal content platforms. Yeah. You've never done like mainstream studio porn or anything no, like that. No, I'm a little nervous and shy. Mm-hmm. Um, but I also like love the exclusivity that OnlyFans kind of gives me because, mm-hmm. I mean, unless you look for leaks, my OnlyFans is where my porn is at and where mm-hmm. I talk to people. So I feel like people are f- made to subscribe, you know? So... I have been thinking about doing browsers maybe one time for, like, the exposure, but mm, I'm not sure yet. Yeah. Yeah. So how did you get – how did you become, like, a top OnlyFans creator? So I am really – so I – my parents don't know what I do. Okay. Yeah, they live, like, 10 minutes away. They would probably commit seppuku if they found out. So what I did – so I didn't have a social media for the longest. I actually grew my OnlyFans through Telegram. Which is like, um, it's kind of like an encrypted like messaging app, like WhatsApp or Signal, mm-hmm. where like, um, where basically I just network with a bunch of other like sex workers and we like exchanged like tips and knowledge and we like mentored each other. And I was able to promote myself by buying OnlyFans promo for the longest. Oh, okay. Yeah. Since OnlyFans doesn't have external, like, yeah. in, like a tra- like a, search engine so Mm -hmm. i had to like buy promo from like other big girls for a second okay that Mm -hmm. makes sense so it's not one of those like spam messages that i get all the time like bro you're only fans dm me and it's like some no no you're like actually paying girls like top creators yeah or i or i used to that's how i got to a pretty high number but i also would get into coaching groups because a lot of the girls at the time would just like be like hey i know how to sex really well do you guys want to learn how to sex so it was like learning like a real estate course i was like yes i would love to know how to sex better so i would get i would get that course or i would like have like these things that were like hey do you want to know how to like optimize your profile so like you know all of it makes sense so i would like get a bunch of those coaching groups and i just 
you know, I really like marketed my OnlyFans internally. Um, but eventually like all the glitches and stuff kind of like made my money a little inconsistent. So I grew my Instagram so I could have like a more consistent income all the mm-hmm. time. Mm-hmm. Even mm-hmm. though you've been deleted seven times. Yes. I get deleted all the time. <laughs> um, and I probably will get deleted again, knock on wood, but I was pretty insecure of how I looked for the longest. Um, mm-hmm. I'm kind of bimbofied right now. I don't know if you can tell, but, um, at the time I actually, when I started my Instagram, I grew my Instagram by doing memes instead of being a hot girl. Cause I just didn't think I was hot enough to go viral or have people subscribe. So I would do things like I flew an airplane banner over Coachella with my OnlyFans link. I like Photoshopped an ad, um, a Fox news thing that said I got kicked out of Harvard for my OnlyFans. So I would like have memes and I would send them to influencers because I just feel like if I sent you a bikini picture, like everyone else's picture, like you don't send that to your friends and you Mm -hmm. don't post that on your story. Mm -hmm. But if you saw like Asian girl gets gangbanged 50 times and now she's kicked out of Harvard, you would send it to your friends, hopefully, Mm -hmm. you know, and that's how I grew my Instagram for the longest. Wow. I mean, you really have like a full methodology behind it. Yeah. It's, and I feel like it shows a little bit more personality too, which is, yeah. I'm, which is why I'm really into podcasts, but I've done a lot of guerrilla style mar- marketing, like business cards. I've like walked around with a totem pole with my sign. Um, I kind of love to embarrass myself. It's like my favorite thing. Really? <laughs> yeah. Why do you think that is? I feel like, you know, you know, being a full-time slut, like, you know, I feel like I've heard every insult under the sun, you know, like when, like guys have really small dicks and they like start rationalizing like loving cuckoldry and stuff i feel Mm -hmm. like i've rationalized like oh you're such a bimbo like but it keeps my name in your mouth so people keep like retweeting or resharing and stuff like it keeps me relevant so i love which makes more leads to my only fans right that's Mm -hmm. so interesting because it's like the dichotomy of taking like okay i'm going to stereotype myself is this like bimbo, but I'm actually going to use this in a really intelligent way to yeah. market myself to like be really successful and make a lot of money. Yeah. I mean, all of it is true, except for to Harvard. I went to community college, but like I did, you know, like fuck 50 guys. And I do, I did do all those like weird things and just putting them out there for people to have opinions, like keeps conversations going, which keeps my own, my only fans, you know, increasing and stuff. So you're, so then you're, probably fairly immune to like internet trolls and like internet- I wouldn't say immune I've I've definitely gotten on a few podcasts and gotten super roasted I don't know I don't know if you saw the interview with me versus sharp on no jumper I got completely demolished I was not ready for like the misogyny and stuff but um for the most part I feel like it's kind of impossible to cancel a sex worker because mm-hmm. I feel like we already are technically canceled mm-hmm. you know for what we do so I feel like I, I have stopped reading comments for my yes, mental health. Yeah. That's smart. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The real ones know what I'm actually like. And when you subscribe to me, that's when I'll actually talk to you. So mm-hmm. I don't, I don't want to give anyone that power of making me feel bad or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No. And I find generally that people don't like join your only fans so they can say like horrible things to you. If they're going to pay, they're generally going to be yeah. kind to you. It's like, the free social media platforms yeah. where people are then decided and to I have stopped that. reading them. So yeah, that's smart. Take that guys. <laughs> <laughs> they can't upset you if you don't let them get to you. Mm-hmm. That's amazing. Um, I mean, you know, I know that having that kind of like presence online and all that attention can be hard. I know that like I can definitely take things personally and I yeah. try to struggle to not do that. And you kind of purposely put yourself out there in mm-hmm. a way that gets that kind of negative yeah. attention that someone like me is like kind of terrified about, but you seem to to welcome it in a way because yeah. you understand that that's what like puts your name out there. Yeah. There's and- no such thing as bad publicity. I'm kidding. There's some bad publicity, yeah. but like in terms of like what I'm doing, I'm just being slutty and being a silly little guy, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Do you feel like that's like authentic to who you really are? Oh yeah. No, I've been doing sex parties since I was 19. I would do like live performance sex shows, like for fun. Like a few days ago, my friends and I went to an adult movie theater and we climbed on stage and just like fingered ourselves. And like all the guys were like, thank you. And I just, I like, I generally, I genuinely love making men horny. Like it makes, it's like my like bread and butter. It fulfills me. If I could do everything if my money situation was the same, I would do my porn for free and for fun. Like just mm-hmm. cause it's, it's just hanging out with my friends, getting fucked and making people horny mm-hmm. and that validation like enriches me. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that you kind of sound almost like the perfect, like the perfect porn star because 
you know, this is a great industry for the right kind of people. And yeah. it's not the right, a and great industry for the wrong kind of people. Mm -hmm. It's also been really fun to see like how far I can take it. Like, mm -hmm. uh, cause she told, Kazumi is, is a real like part of myself, you know, mm -hmm. but she is still a character that I want people to project their fantasies on. And like, I just want to feel like this like superhero for a second where I feel like I can be super slutty and then, you know, come back and be me, you know, when mm -hmm. I come home and be cozy with my dogs and stuff. So what is like the more you at home? I would say, you know, it's so I, it's not that much different. <laughs> I I mean, I, I would say I probably go to like a sex party like once or twice a month, you know, just, just to get the edge off. That's mm -hmm. me. But besides that, I'm kind of a homebody. Like I don't go to clubs or bars. I don't go to loud places. It makes me like kind of nervous. I do... My motto is I'll try anything twice. You know, I'll I'll go to something weird. I'll go to a situation and I'll figure it out. Um, like I went to a furry convention a few weeks ago. Um, I want to like find like um, a little convention for like um, people who are into like adult baby diaper play. Like I like understanding communities and coming into them and like getting in there. Like I was I went LARPing a few weeks ago. Oh, how was that? It was so fun. I was at the Renaissance Fair. Ugh, um, I wanted to go to that. I know. I was my daughter. A, my husband would not. I was a wench. So. Yeah, like Sorry. what I like to do for fun is like enter communities and like understand them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like so a slutty... you went. You went as a wench. Yeah, I was a wench. I would say like I was. I was trying to come as a courtesan, like, but mm -hmm. I was mostly wench. <laughs> 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 so okay. Um, so sex parties. You love sex parties. Tell mm -hmm. me about the first one that you went to. So the first one I ever went to, um, I was getting over a breakup and I was swiping through Tinder and. Again, I'll try anything twice or a million times, but this guy's Tinder ad was just like a link to a FET party. Fet, you know, do you know FET, Fet Life? Life yes. A FET Life um, sex party. And I kind of was like, fuck it, like, let's go. And he was like, do you want to meet in public first? And I was like, just pick me up. Like, let's just go. And I, I'm still alive to this day. Um, and we went to this place in Chatsworth that I think was a, a porn studio in the daytime but at night turned into like a sex party yeah and that sounds you know, right <laughs> and yeah I, I mean I got fucked by like five people like men and women but I remember the moment that I was like this is for me was I looked up and it was just like a ring of men like surrounding us like a little mosh pit like jacking off and I just it just felt awesome. Like I felt like the center of attention. I was kind of nerdy growing up. I felt really empowered and I felt like everyone respected me. Like I mm -hmm. felt like afterwards, like people came up to me and was like, that was such a great performance. Like, where can I find you? You can't because I was 19 at the time. Um, but people were like, wow, like it was so romantic. It was so sensual. I loved watching it. And like everyone just, it just felt like the perfect world where no one gave me shit for fucking in front of a bunch of strangers, you mm -hmm. know? And I felt clean. We all I had, had like a test date party afterwards where we all got tested woohoo oh, so wow. yeah <laughs> yeah I mean that's what's kind of nice about like these small kind of more private I guess sex communities is that they do like they, yeah. they like to engage in this cool stuff but they also like respect each other as yeah it's beings. I'm like polyamorous so I feel so I was like indoctrinated into this kind of like little polycule and mm -hmm. we started throwing sex parties every Friday for like a year um it was like a cool like like situation because like at school I was like this film student and then on Saturdays and Sundays I was like this like sex party mistress that was like had my orgy bag full of condoms and lube and stuff <laughs> <laughs> wow that's amazing mm -hmm. so you mentioned earlier that your parents don't know what you do for a living do they still not know no they don't know they're so Asian and they're so old I mean I don't doubt my dad watches Asian porn mm -hmm. but that's also one of the reasons why I've stayed only on OnlyFans mm -hmm. because I just feel like he probably does go on Pornhub. You know, mm -hmm. he pro that's probably his main site because he's mm -hmm. like an ancient, like wise being. <laughs> he probably doesn't have like a favorite site or something. Um, I honestly, when they ask, I talk about cryptocurrency until they tell me to shut the hell up. <laughs> They'll be like, what? And I'll be like, dad, like this is an NFT. And they'd be like, stop like I don't I don't really don't want to hear anything else <laughs> dude that's such a great cover for like yeah. older people because yeah like the, whenever I try to explain crypto or nft to my parents they're like they're just stop. like stop what and yeah. yeah and that's such a great <laughs> yeah so no right. they think I did made it really big on bitcoin I have a little crypto but not enough to like yeah. be where I am right yeah. now <laughs> so I mean I feel like it, 
when I talk to girls whose like parents find out, usually it's like a friend of theirs who tells them. Do you are you worried about that happening? I would say like outside of like the one percent that I look like this. Like when I'm home, like my I don't have my lashes on and mm-hmm. I have no makeup and I'm not wearing things that show my body really. Like mm-hmm. I'm just chilling. So when I go out with my parents, I feel like I like we don't really get recognized. And a lot of my close actual friends right now don't know my parents directly. Mm-hmm. So I mean, prayers up that they don't find out and you ever and you think if they find out they'll <laughs> no they would probably explode because we kind of had beef when i was growing up like they kicked me out when i was 19 and then i came back and then i got kicked out again and i came back so it's one of those things where our relationship is finally in a good place because i'm older and it seems like i've got my life figured out because mm-hmm. i do but i do porn mm-hmm. um and i feel like if i told them like they'd be like wow yeah. we went backwards <laughs> it's tough uh huh. I mean, I don't understand what that's like because my parents work in porn, and that's how I. Got and your into parents this industry. are just cool, but um, <laughs> I can imagine that that would be that. That's tough. yeah. I, I would assume that like maybe one day I will tell them, but like it's just now is not the time because they're mm-hmm. so there's like they're so nice to me now, so I just don't want to mess it up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's tough. So, um, you have a marketing background, Mm -hmm. um, and it sounds to me like you really understand marketing. Did you apply what you learned from your background to like your OnlyFans? Definitely. So I, I'm pretty sure I was in like an, a pyramid scheme marketing thing. Mm -hmm. And every morning they would like indoctrinate us in like these, like, like affirmations and like chants. And like, they would have us like go down, go like around a circle and like high five each other. So, um, it is so cultish. It is kind of cultish. (laughs) I will not name it, but I like, I felt like I actually internalized a lot of positive propaganda and like self-talk. Like we were always listening to like Tony Rogers and like, all you mean those, Tony Robbins? Tony Robbins, I'm sorry. And like those other like in, like mm-hmm. influential speakers. And I felt like it really internalized like working hard and just like picking yourself up by the bootstraps. Like I knew what it was, but I felt like it made me a better person because they would send me door to door. They would send me um, to things like Skid Row and like, you know, go to tents and stuff. And I would have to like ask, like it was putting myself in uncomfortable positions to my, um, to make a commission. And wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. You were in a skid row. Oh, so my Go, marketing. You like trying to sell people. My No, no, no. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, my, my, my marketing job at the time was giving out free cell phones to people on EBT or Medi-Cal because mm-hmm. people on low income definitely need a cell phone to be able to apply to jobs or gotcha. go to buses. Okay. Um, but the specific company I was in was very cultish and like mm-hmm. made it like seem like this was like your life passion. And, you mm-hmm. know, obviously I want to help all these people. So they would send me to all the welfare offices in Los Angeles County, Skid Row. Um, I would go door to door in the projects and Section 8 and stuff like that. So I just really like saw like what it was like to, um, you know, like live in those types of situations Mm -hmm. and just kind of like be like, okay, I really do not want this for myself. Mm -hmm. And also like going door to door, like being me, like with my big bag of phones looking like this, like it really taught me like just kind of like perseverance you know because mm-hmm. i felt like a lot of people were like no i don't want you to give me a free cell phone and i'd mm-hmm. be like why don't you want it um so i learned how to like overcome objections and kind of like really like up my mentality and just not really care what people think because it was kind of like an embarrassing job but it was my job for three years and i feel like now that i do only fans like i've done worse things for money for sure like i can do i can definitely do this and yeah, like put myself out there and like have people like project their opinions on me and shit like that. Yeah, mm-hmm. well, I mean that's one hell of a training ground. Yeah. <laughs> so did like going to the projects and um, you know, reaching out to people in Skid Row. Does that did that exposure? Because so many of us like never really see that. Like we see it when we drive by, but we don't really immerse ourselves in that world. Mm-hmm. Did that give you like a sense of gratitude that carries on? It definitely gave me a sense of gratitude. And I definitely, you know, am like super nice to people who are in those situations. And I definitely do not like people who kind of hate on the homeless people because mm-hmm. I actually was chronically houseless um, between like the ages of 19 and 22, like as in like I'd get kicked out and then they, I would like have to figure out my life for a second and come back and then find a weird boyfriend and live on his couch and just have to do like weird things in weird situations all the time back then. And I, it just really taught me like empathy, like, like Mm -hmm. being kind first and like not really being judgmental and stuff. Yeah. I think that's such an important 
lesson to learn. That yeah, especially a lot of us don't have. Especially when you start making a lot of money, like yeah. a, like I would say, like since then I've started to make a lot of money, and like money that I can't. Never, I didn't even dream of making when I was nineteen, and my views on that sort of stuff hasn't changed. Like I am still, it's always being kind first, you know, I'm not trying to get over on anybody or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's one of like the most important traits Mm -hmm. one can have. And like a lot of people are not very kind these days. Yeah. It's not, it costs nothing to just consider how someone would feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right, guys, we're going to take a quick commercial break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about, of course, gangbangs because like we have, what the gangbang gal? Is yeah, that what gangbang gal. Gangbang. <laughs> so um, hang tight. We will be right back. Woohoo! Holly Randall Unfiltered is brought to you by BetterHelp. What does burnout mean to you? Are you feeling fatigued? Are you feeling unmotivated? This is where BetterHelp comes in. BetterHelp will match you to the perfect online therapist for whatever issues it is that you are dealing with. And if you find that the therapist they match you with isn't really working for you, they make it free and easy to switch to somebody else. With BetterHelp, you can do an audio call, a video chat, or you can even just text with them if you don't want to see or talk to your therapist in person. It's entirely up to whatever is comfortable for you. And you can do this, of course, in the comfort of your own home. You don't have to go to somebody's office. You don't have to wait in a waiting room. It is all on your own time and your own terms. And online therapy is cheaper than in-person therapy and financial aid is available. Our listeners get 10% off of their first month when they go to betterhelp.com slash hollyrandall. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash hollyrandall. Take care of your mental health for you and for the ones that you love. All right, guys, we are back. So, Kazumi, um, gangbang gal. Yeah. How did you get that name? I love gangbangs. I've talked pretty publicly about this time I did 50 guys in one night. Um, I would say I find gangbangs very empowering and I do them pretty often, but in my personal life, honestly, mm-hmm. I don't think I, I, I have one gangbang video on my OnlyFans, but mostly it's like a thing I, I just do pers- like in my private life because mm-hmm. I feel like I need to do it to take the edge off. So explain <laughs> to me how you find that empowering because I'm sure, as you know, most people think that gangbangs is like one of the most degrading things women can do. So what's your argument against that? I mean, the, the easiest way to explain it is like if you were a guy and – 50 women wanted to suck your dick, you'd be like, this is pretty awesome. So if you flip it around and I'm the guy and all these people want to suck my dick, it's just as awesome. And also like all the gangbangs I've been to, all the guys are like super about consent and smelling nice and just being, cause I, I go to like these like normal people gangbangs. They're not for porn or like for an event or for money. I just do them to be in a moment and all the guys there are very like hi can I touch your elbow hi do you want a massage hi like they know that this is for me and I feel like the conductor like Mm -hmm. the visual of having all these men ready to pleasure me like turns me on so much to know that they're here for me you know Mm -hmm. like because theoretically if you're in a gangbang and in an actual gangbang like where it's all about my pleasure so it ends when I want it to end like I'll have a guy in there for two minutes and I'll be like cool Another guy comes in two minutes. Cool. I'm not really fucking to completion at these things. It's more like I just wanted like the visual of being surrounded. Mm -hmm. And so like after like a guy's like two minutes and I come because I come really easily. It takes Mm -hmm. me like 30 seconds. I feel like my vaginal canal brings my juice spot like right there. So like I feel like I rack up the body is like pretty fast, like 30 minutes. And it's like there's no real difference between fucking one guy for 30 minutes versus 10 guys for 30 minutes except the visual of mm-hmm. feeling like I'm, I'm a really cool gal you know so wait so I, i'm assuming that the guys don't come in so wait do you usually come with every guy i i like to come with every guy but that's because it takes I, i'm a, i i'm one of those blessed women who can come from penetration so like it takes me like 30 seconds because my g-spot's like right there and that like you know like most guys like big or small can make it happen yeah yeah. That's amazing. No, I'm like, so jealous of you. Yeah, I and cannot he's, come from penetration. And he, oh, no. I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's all right. My it's it's a burden. It's the burden that I carry in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry for you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, sorry. I just, um, this is so interesting. So how do you set these 
up? Like, do you recruit guys and they come to your place or do these happen kind of naturally at these sex parties that you I would say about? with all my guy friends, I can pretty much call them for a gangbang if I need to. But I have like my favorite sex parties that I go to where I know if I go, there will be a trade. Because another thing I love too is I love, I love making the regular Joe happy. Like my type of guy is a regular schmegular, normal job, normal penis, normal height, normal everything. I just like them very normal because I like to feel like the big deal. Like I like to feel like they're like, wow, I will never forget this moment. So I like going to like um, sex parties that my friends throw where it's like a new batch of guys and everyone has their condoms and stuff because I only have protected sex abuse. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, it's like just new meat. You know, there's nothing like the one thing better for me than dick is new dick. And making that new dick really happy that they met me. <laughs> this is going to sound so weird, but you <laughs> you remind me so much of my mother. Oh, <laughs> awkward. My, my parent, no, because my parents were swingers oh. and they used to go to orgy parties. And my mom's whole thing was she was always like, I would always like look for like the ugliest man in the room that wasn't giving him any attention. Cause I'm like the goddess of love and I wanted I to like make that. him feel good. Wait, your mom sounds like the coolest person ever, but did they tell you that you were, they were swingers like since childhood? Or? Yeah. I've always known. I've oh always known God. they worked in porn. And like they're, my family's very open about okay. sex. So. I, I definitely want to copy that and just have my kid always know that this is, this is cool. I know? think, you know, I mean, there's so many people that find I think it's all on how you're, how you're raised, right? Yeah. Like, so if you're raised without a sense of like shame around sexuality, mm-hmm. um, then you're not going to really internalize that, yeah. you know, when you grow up. I think a lot of these people that are so like angry or aggravated towards like maybe the way that you behave and that you do gangbangs and are so mm-hmm. judgmental of sex workers and stuff like that, they're generally people who are raised in yeah. environments that put a lot of shame around sex. Mm-hmm. And so of course, like they carry that into um their adulthood or maybe they were raised maybe the opposite maybe they were raised in a environment with like no boundaries and my parents had boundaries yeah. they weren't like sex parties happening at my house when i was a kid yeah of course. um you know they were to me they were just parents but they had this like other life that mostly honestly existed before i was born once yeah. i was born like they calmed down a lot mm-hmm. but yeah they had you know they were young and they were yeah. hot and it was the fucking yeah. 60s and they like were in london and I they were like that. They were having fun, you know? I, I went to a sex party in London and I felt like every, everyone there was like, keep saying American things. And I was like, cheeseburger and, <laughs> was um, cheeseburger. and um, the president and, and um, I don't know, words. And they were like, oh my God, I love that. Keep speaking. And I was like, I don't know if you guys are actually turned on right now. I think you guys are just like, LOL, this stupid American. <laughs> oh my God, that's so <laughs> funny. That is so cool. I definitely I want to be open to my future children when I like, cause I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. I'm way happier the way I am than if mm-hmm. I was a yeah. different way. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so you want to have a family someday? Oh yeah. Like right at the edge of menopause, I want to have a kid or two. Um, but right now I just want to like live my life and stuff, but it's always funny. Cause when I like talk about gangbangs, I feel like I didn't say anything wrong. You know, mm-hmm. I'm just kind of speaking my truth. And sometimes the comments are so infuriated and like, I can like, people are like, you should kill yourself. Like what the hell? Like if I meet you in the street, I'll punch you in the face. And I'm like, do you want women to enjoy sex or not? Like, mm-hmm. do you want us to like, like what? See, that, that's what I think like is the underlying culprit with, you know, so many men specifically. Oh, and you know, honestly women too that have such a huge problem with gangbangs is the idea that like a woman could derive pleasure from sex and that a yeah. woman would enjoy the attention and be an exhibitionist from all of those men. Mm. Cause you're right. If you think about it, the flip side, like a guy being like with a bunch of girls, there's not mm. as much stigma around that, but yeah. it's the opposite. It's like when women take sexual empowerment, like into their own hands and mm. unashamedly enjoy sex i think a lot of people have problems with that yeah and that makes me want to gangbang even harder (laughs) it makes me suck their dick just a little bit more (laughs) i love you so much (laughs) i love you too (laughs) it makes me want to gangbang even harder wow that is that is a quote i don't know how i'm gonna use that but i love that so much yeah (laughs) so um okay so you said you want to have kids like on the edge of menopause which is sort of what i did and i will actually highly recommend it i am 43 and i had my daughter when i was 41 congratulations um thank you i though i will tell you like we are trying to have another one and i don't know if that's gonna happen but Mm. um i am glad that i 
you know, had like my younger days to yeah. do all the crazy shit I wanted to do and like build my career and yeah. all that stuff. And then, you know, settled down as a when mom When I later. want a kid, I want to be like home, well, home and present. And I want to be a cool mom, you yeah. know? And I like, my partner is so cool and I want us to just have cool kids together. Mm-hmm. So how, okay. So you have a partner. Mm-hmm. So how is he about, are you guys poly, both of you? Yeah, we're polyamorous. We definitely, I mean, obviously have our boundaries, um, but he like lets me be me and I let him be him. And it's it's just like worked so much better for me. And I don't really experience jealousy for like his experiences. I feel a lot of compersion because he's my best friend. So of mm-hmm. course I want people to suck his dick and have him be a happy dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's interesting. <coughs> and I mean, like, was it hard for you to find somebody like that? I would say, you know what? It kind of wasn't because I'm just really open about who I am and what I do. So every, I, it's not a thing that like I go on a date with a guy and I tell him on the date. Like mm-hmm. usually like before we've met in person, you know that this is what I am. You've seen my Instagram. You like all my friends are some type of deranged pervert in some way. Mm-hmm. So either you're with it or you're not. But usually when they enter the spaces, they see how cool everyone is and how it's not really like a toxic place at all so I feel like a lot of guys are like oh cool I would say like over time the the real trials and tribulations are like when we have situations um that come up and seeing how we react to those situations when we feel like a boundary is crossed or something makes us uncomfortable okay so like basically how well you communicate yeah like I like we have like a fluid bond so I don't have off-camera sex raw which I feel like is a reasonable exchange because I mean I, this person has to be tested and yeah. stuff like that. It's also that. like just being responsible and safe. Yeah, like I'm not gonna just go out like when I go to these gangbangs, it's protected sex of mm-hmm. consensual adults, mm-hmm. which you know, which makes me beg that like what is wrong with the gangbangs? Like it's I'm doing it in a safe way. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I mean <coughs> nobody's gonna tell you how otherwise, otherwise you're just gonna gangbang harder. Yeah, I will gangbang <laughs> even harder. <laughs> Mark my words. <laughs> So does your partner come with you to these gangbangs? Does um, he participate? We go to sex parties together, but honestly, I like to be a solo dolo cruiser. Like I like mm. to have like, like for me, what's fun is that he does his thing and I do my thing. And then we come together at the end of the night to share our experiences mm-hmm. because I'm not really like a unicorn hunter. I'm not like, I love women, but I like to like, just like do a one-on-one. Mm-hmm. I like either a one-on-one situation or a giant orgy gangbang situation. I don't really like to do threesomes or like uneven like quadrants and stuff. Mm. Do you feel like it's because, like, one person's always not getting the attention? Yeah, and I feel like it's really hard to find, like, a really, like, fluid exchange where everyone's on the same page and just as freaky. Or, like, just, like, just, like, meshing well with all the chemistry. Mm -hmm. So I like, and also I feel like, like, the experience a woman has with a guy is a little different than what a woman has with a couple. Mm -hmm. And I want him to have the fullest experience because I don't want the girls to be like, oh, like, she's there. Like, I don't want to, like, moan too hard or anything like that. Yeah, I could see how there would be, like, a weird kind of dynamic, like, concern about jealousy or possessiveness. Yeah, and I I really, truly don't care. Like, I want, if someone sucks his dick better than me, I I hope so because Mm -hmm. he deserves that experience and I'm probably, like, a very mid-dick sucker. You know, like, like I can't deep throat or anything. If a girl can deep throat your dick, I have it. Like, because I will not take that experience from you. And also, I like to believe he's dating me for reasons beyond my dick sucking skills. You know, yeah. there's like maybe like five other things he likes about me or something. So besides the fact that you guys are obviously both very sexually open, what else about your relationship <coughs> makes you two compatible? He's really cool. He's very like emotionally intelligent. Mm -hmm. And I feel like he also begs a lot of like room for growth. Like, you know, like we always have an open mind first, you know, before we like see, like make a judgment on a situation. So we do a lot of adventures together. Like we went LARPing together. We went to that furry convention together and we are able to like mesh into like different worlds and not make people feel uncomfortable or judged. So it's really fun to kind of like do be a slutty Anthony Bourdain with him, you know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's just so hard to find somebody who's so open like that. Yeah. No, I love adventure and I love just doing weird, freaky shit. So <laughs> is there anything on your bucket list that you haven't done yet? I haven't done a DP 
and I would love to do an airtight. But before I must walk, I must crawl and do anal first. But I keep giving people poop dick and it makes me afraid. And I just, I don't know, I'm scared. So, okay. So have you, do you clean out before you do anal? So I've done anal like once before when I was in high school because I wanted to do the poop hole loophole. So I didn't go to hell. Wait. Oh, right. Okay, yeah. Sorry. So you, you didn't want to lose your virginity. Okay. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Yeah. So right. I've never heard that. Term yeah. Before. I didn't want to go to hell. I still am. But yeah, I definitely gave poop dick and because it was high school and I wasn't prepared to like clean yeah. my butthole. Yeah. Um, but this one time I went to a party and I was on my period and I was like, this is it. This is the day I'm going to get fucked in the butt. I want to get butt fucked. And I did an enema and I didn't know that what happens during an enema is that you do like an explosion of crap everywhere. And I was like, after the first five minutes, I was like, okay, I'm going to butt plug it up and I'm going to go to the party. And I do, 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 to walk to the party. Um, and oh, no. yeah, <laughs> Keep going. so I was on the bed and I was like, you know what? I'll let my boyfriend have like some pussy sex first. Let me get in the mood. And when I came, I shot on the bed <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, and he was like, babe, um, you know, and then like a whole crowd of people came and was like, oh, no, I think someone because it looked it was it looked like period blood. And I was like, oh, yeah, my period. Sorry. Yeah, because it would have been a lot of water. Yeah. yeah. And I was like and someone was like, oh, I have a Tide pen. And she like, you know, got the Tide <laughs> pen and started cleaning up my mess. And I was like, wait, but I'm still kind of horny. So I got a, a bigger butt plug. And I, well, I ran outside and Kitty Jaguar was outside. Do you uh-huh. know Kitty Jaguar? She uh-huh. has like a giant like spider web tattoo in her asshole. So she's a okay. butt expert. Okay. And I was like, hey, if I put a butt plug up my butt and I'm still shitting for my enema, will it plug me up? And she was like, theoretically, yes, it's a butt plug. So, uh-huh. but like, stop. But I was like, no. So I put a butt plug up and I like went down and I kept partying. <laughs> yeah. But no more anal. No more anal. No more anal attempts that night. Yeah. I was like, oopsie. Um, I have to, before I, there were so many people there, you know? So I was like, I'm going to figure this out before I, I like unleash this on like unsuspecting victims. So did, did everyone just think that was period blood? Yeah. Yeah. It was pretty watery. So I was like, okay, like, you know, but it was still like, not my bed, you know, yeah. and other people were fucking on top of it. And like, you know, the party <laughs> continued. So I was like, um, let me never return. <laughs> oh my God. Oh my God. You have so many good stories. Okay. So yeah, because the colon can like absorb water. This is happened. Yeah, in, no, in, I thought it would be like a before. five minute thing. I yeah. didn't know it was an hour. It also long. depends on how dehydrated you are too. Yeah. Like your colon will absorb more water mm-hmm. and hold it if you're, if you're super dehydrated. So yeah. Um, Lesson learned. <laughs> I mean, have you, so do you have, I mean, you must have people that like do a lot of anal to kind of yeah. consult with. I remember when I, I was dating a guy once that like had a huge dick and really loved anal. We called him anal hurricane. <laughs> um, and I remember I actually reached out to Joanna <coughs> angel for advice mm-hmm. on it because she's no, like I have my anal, anal mentors. I just, I love to eat. I need to like time it right where like I can sacrifice a tasty meal to mm-hmm. like have like amazing anal the next day. Mm-hmm. But I hate like the lack of spontaneity with anal, you mm-hmm. know, like if I want to get fucked right now on this podcast, it's, it, I could do it, mm-hmm. but like fucked anally, I'm going to have to clean your carpet and you know, we might not be friends anymore. So like, I just, yeah. <laughs> well, have you heard about uh butt pasta? What What's butt pasta? So it sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm actually quoting an interview that I had with Ryan Keeley, who Mm -hmm. was interested in doing anal. She also reached out to Joanna Angel and I can't remember exactly what the deal was. And again, Joanna, I'm sure I could fill you in or Mm -hmm. we could go back and watch that podcast. But basically that you, cause Ryan's was the same thing. She's like, I'm not going to not eat for like 24 hours. It's insane. Yeah. Um, and I think it was something like you could have like carby, starchy foods that didn't have like no sauce or anything like that uh-huh. and, and no salad and gummy that bears. was safe to eat gummy bears are also like an option mm-hmm. um because the sugar will help keep your blood sugar level up but you can eat like yeah up till before an anal scene it just has to be specific like starchy kind of non-colored foods yeah and no. so ryan called that butt pasta butt and pasta. um i think it changed her life yeah well i will um get some butt pasta and i will come back to you in my next podcast okay and let me know how it goes (laughs) yeah because i feel like i feel like a successful anal experience is in your future yeah no i i feel like i would love anal i because i feel like the 
the thought of being airtight would be so awesome to me mm-hmm. because how am I doing gangbangs and not getting DP'd? Mm-hmm. I only have two available holes, which makes me an amateur gangbanger at best, you know? <laughs> <laughs> I want to enter, like, the gangbang hall of fame. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we definitely got to, like, throw anal into that mix if that's going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I remember one of my first sex parties. There was this girl, and her name was, like, Galaxy or something. Mm-hmm. She was, like, a dancer in the daytime and, like, in the... I guess evening and then in the evening evening she was the gangbang girl right and I remember like seeing her like sur- like on this stage and all these guys were just gangbanging her and using all her holes and I remember just being like this is awesome like all the guys were like she's so cool she's awesome she's so hot and fun and she was just making all these men happy and she was happy and I was just like this is like this girl should be like the president like she she made this world a better place by like letting us use her vagina and ass and stuff (laughs) (laughs) oh my god I love that (laughs) so um what are your so what are your Next steps. So, okay, anal, right? We're gonna yeah. we're gonna do an anal scene, or you're gonna do an anal yeah, scene. We're gonna do an anal yeah, scene. Yeah, you can you can be there. I just mean the collective we, the, the world, and you yeah. is gonna do an anal scene. Um, <laughs> you're considering possibly doing studio porn. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it would probably maybe. be Brazzers because I mean, I just, it's just a big one. It's the mm-hmm. big O. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You should tell them that to have me direct it. Ooh, that'd be so cute. I know. I might do it if you're there. <laughs> Tell them you'll only do it if I'm there. Ooh, it'll, I'll let... it'll give me so much more clout. Yeah, I'll be like, I only want it. Holly watching my anal scene on Brothers. <laughs> um, what else? Like, do you have any other goals in the immediate future? I want to get to a level of longevity. Like, I, when I look at people like Riley Reed and Abella Danger and Lana Rhodes, they have like, compl- and Lena the Plug, honestly, they have com- completely surpassed just being a sex symbol and they are like a household name Mm -hmm. and they've like created this level of notoriety where they're making so much money based off their name. Like Mm -hmm. if you say Riley Reed, everybody knows who that is and everybody Mm -hmm. has a boner and everyone's panties are wet. And I want that power. Like I Mm -hmm. want to do whatever it takes to get there. I did two reality TV show pilots this last, um, this year so far. I'm not sure if anyone will get to a network, but I'm just getting to every PR source I can and just mm-hmm. showing up. Yeah. I'm saying yes to every opportunity. I was in a cooking show, which was so random. Really? Yeah. Versus Adriana Chechik, which was even more random. We were making mac and cheese. <laughs> what was the cooking show? So OnlyFans has this thing called OnlyFans TV, which is, uh, yeah. It was for OnlyFans. Yeah, but okay. it was an actual production. Like, yeah, we yeah. were on set for a day or two, um, and this, like, chef taught us how to make mac and cheese, and then we versed and stuff. It was cool, because I actually do cook, but I always thought, like, if I was in a cooking show, I'd be next to Guy Fieri or something, mm-hmm. but I was next to Adriana Chechik, which is, like, way cooler. Yeah, I feel like that's so much better company. <laughs> yeah. No, I was like, wow, I'm making pasta next to you. This is awesome. Were you guys, <laughs> like... Com- Doing like competing. Yeah, dishes. we were competing. You know? Like who makes the best? Yeah, you can see um, who wins. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, what's the secret? <laughs> we're gonna have to watch the show to find out. Yeah, but I also just um got on the cover of Australia's Playboy, oh, which awesome. was cool. Yay! And yeah. Mac and I got a feature in Maxim. So I'm just looking to get every eye on me as possible. I'm trying yeah. to get on Forbes. I'm trying to get on Vice. I'm doing this thing with Barstool next month. So that'll I'm, give you a lot of exposure. Yay. So I'm, I'm just getting in there and it's, it's become so fun to where my career is an asset. And it's like this cool part of myself, like mm-hmm. Kazumi, who's just like this untouchable character. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But don't, I, I just though with all of that PR, how are your parents not going to find out? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm thinking it's going to have to come like this year or something. I just want to do it in a cool way. I want to be able, like, if I, also it's such a funny thing because they're so Asian and old that like whenever they like want help, I'm like, dad, let me pay for it. And he's like, no. And I'm like, dad, like, let me, like, what's your retirement plan? Like, I want to help retire you. And he'll be like, no, focus on yourself. Like, stack your money up. And I'm like, you have no idea what I do. Like, you could just stop working. But they just won't stop working. Um, So I'm feeling like if I tell them and I show them how much money I make, they'll stop working and just, like, live like little happy old people. But I feel like they would find out I do gangbangs and then they would be like, no. <laughs> yeah, I have to keep working. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, that's hard. I mean, I don't know. I've I've talked to quite a few people who thought their parents were going to have a horrific reaction. And, you know, obviously at first they weren't like 
thrilled yeah because i think that's a hard pill to swallow for a lot of parents but Mm -hmm. then like after a time they saw that their child was doing well and was happy and successful and i mean i'm pretty sure they know i'm a slut but i don't know the the true depths of depravity that like really go on you know yeah (laughs) yeah well, I wish you the best of luck with that. Thank you. You have to let me know if um, it's like you my tell them. eternal anxiety. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. I know. I wish I could just make. I wish I could make people in the world more accepting. Of yeah. The gangbang gal. Yeah. If everyone got a gangbang, everyone would be happy. I know, right? Yeah. If everybody just really knew what they were about, mm-hmm. which is about your pleasure. Yeah. <laughs> you having like an amazing time. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> well. You're out here changing, I think, people's minds. Oh, yeah. Get gaming. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I can guarantee you there's going to be one comment on this video is going to be like, you know, she changed my mind about gangbangs. You know, yeah. changing the world one, one gangbang, gangbang at, at a time. time. <laughs> Kazumi, thank you so much for coming on. This was really Thanks fun. Thanks for having me on. Um, I do have some questions for my Patreon members that I'm going to ask you in a little yes. bonus Q&A. So if you're a member of my Patreon, you will be able to watch this extra little piece of fun content. If you're not, then why aren't you? You should join. Join. Patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Kazumi, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? My Oh, um, the best way we could talk is for my OnlyFans, which is Kazumi's World. It's always $3. It's always accessible. And my Instagram for now is also under the same name, Kazumi's World. But I get deleted, so you should probably subscribe. Fantastic. And you guys can find me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. Um, don't forget I'm on TikTok, so oh follow God. me there, Holly Randall Unfiltered. Um, I only also have an OnlyFans, which I like never promote on oh. this show. But if you want to check it out, it's OnlyFans.com slash Holly Randall. And of course, as I mentioned before, if you want to support the show, go to Patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Thank you guys so much for joining us and I'll see you next week. <laughs>